Okay, so we're headed into our segment on measures of position and outliers. For starters, I wanted to do number seven with you, so let me zoom in here. Uh, I'll put a big star on it here, number seven. Hopefully you can read it. I'll read it with you. Uh, the average 20 to 29-year-old man is 69.6 inches tall with a standard deviation of 3 inches, while the average woman is 64 inches, 64.1 inches tall with a standard deviation of 3.8 inches. Who is relatively, I'll underline the word relatively, relatively taller, a 75-inch man or a 70-inch woman? Now you say to yourself, well, that depends, you know. How far above the mean on the normal distribution is that man? And how far above the mean on the normal curve is that woman with regard to, you know, each separate distribution? So let's draw this and let's actually take a look. I'm going to bring up the whiteboard. Okay, so this question of, you know, who has better position, relative position, it's helpful to draw the picture and think about it. So I'm going to um, highlight a few things here. Okay, so here I have the, ma the male curve centered at 69.6 with a standard deviation of 3, and we're looking at this male who's, you know, 75 inches tall. So in the past, we said that if we knew um, how many standard deviations above the mean that, you know, that that person is, we could then associate that with a percentile, right? Well, now we're just going to add a little more formal language. When you find out how many deviations above the mean that is, that's actually called getting a z-score. So z is equal to x minus mu over sigma. So let's actually go ahead and then get a z-score for that man that's 75 inches tall. So the z-score for him then would be, you know, 75 minus 69.6 divided by the standard deviation of the males, which is 3. Okay, let's crunch that out. I'll hit pause. Okay, so let me grab my eraser here. So you probably by now figured out that the z-score with regard to that male is 1.8. So I'm just going to write here, z-male. <laughs> z-score with regard to that male is 1.8. I'll circle that. Now, let's go ahead and get the z-score with regard to this female here that's 70 inches tall. But take into account that, you know, female heights have their own standard deviation and their own mean. But, okay, now let's go ahead and get a z-score with regard to that female. Okay, so my z-score, I'm going to call it z-fem, <laughs> is going to be uh, 70 minus 64.1 divided by the standard d for the females, which is, you know, 3.8. And again, I just obtained all that information out of that problem that I read to you earlier. So, all right, let's crunch that out. I'll hit pause. Okay, so by now you probably figured out that the z-score with regard to the females is one point, about 1.55. Okay, so what a z-score actually tells you is how many deviations above the mean you are. So if I can draw this, I'm going to choose another color here, red. What we're basically saying is that the male 1.8 z-score, that basically means 1.8 plus 1.8 sigma. So the male was about 1.8 standard deviations above the mean. The female plus 1.55 sigma, the female was about 1.5 standard deviations above the mean. So, you know, what we find out in our very near future is we'll be looking up z-scores in the back of the book and associating that with a percentile. So basically, if your z-score is only 1.55, your percentile rank is less than, you know, someone that has a z-score of 1.8. So, long story short, with regard to heights, you know, the higher z-score wins. So the male, so the answer here is male. The male has the better relative position there. Or, another way of saying that is the higher percentile rank. Okay? Relatively speaking. All right, I hope that helps. So just keep your lookout on, you know, how we get a z-score, and later on down the road we'll figure out how to actually look up a z-score and get a percentile with regard to that. Okay, now the next thing we're going to start looking at is box plots and outliers. Okay, so for this next problem that I'm going to do with you, I'll star it here. It's called um, stolen, stolen credit card. 
uh, a credit card company has a, a fraud detective service, detection service, that determines if a card has any, underline the word unusual, unusual activity. The company maintains a database of daily charges on a customer's credit card. Uh, days when the card was inactive are excluded from the database. If a day's worth of charges appears unusual, again that word unusual, the customer is contacted to make sure the credit card has not been compromised. Use the following daily charges to determine the amount that the daily charges must exceed before being considered unusual, basically. So you're looking at these charges, okay? And you're looking at the number, probably if you're like me, you're looking at the number 212, you know? And the question is, you know, is it unusual? Well, to answer that, there's lots of things we could do, okay? We could make a, what's called a modified box plot to display outliers. We're going to do that on the TI-83 in a moment. Okay. We could also use, if we're going old school by hand, we could use what's called the IQR criterion to determine upper and lower fence bounds to determine if any of those observations lie outside of that upper fence bound. So, um, all right, for starters, I want to give you a little background information. Let me hit pause. Okay, now in a moment, we're going to use the technology to create a box plot, and I wanted to talk a little bit about that. Here's an example of, of a box plot, okay, sometimes called a box and whisker plot. A box plot is just a visual display. The ends of the boxes are where your Q1 and your Q3 are. This line here is where your median is, and uh, then the whiskers, you know, they, it'll display your max and it'll display your min. So long story short, five number summary. So sometimes, you know, we're asked to give the five number summary of the data set. And one of the f fastest way to do that is to run a box plot on your, you know, TI-83 and it'll produce a five num sum, okay? Now here's the thing though. You say to yourself, well, a modified box plot will display outliers. So the notion is, you know, in theory, let me grab another color here. There, there exist these fence bounds, okay? So here I'm going to call this a lower fence, lower fence, and an upper fence. And basically, in theory, if anybody lives outside the lower fence, they're an outlier. If anybody lives, you know, above the upper fence bound, they're an outlier. Okay? So how do you determine those upper and lower fence bounds? Well, here we have the IQR criterion. So basically, Q3 plus 1.5 times the IQR will give your upper fence bound. Q1 minus 1.5 times the IQR will give you your lower fence bound. So... If we knew Q3 and Q1, you know, we could easily figure out our upper and lower fence bounds. So let's actually start off there because we're really learning how to use our calculator a lot in this course. So I'm going to pull up the virtual calculator. Let me hit pause. Okay, so I have the virtual calculator here. You'll see here um, I hit the stat button. And let's see if the pen will let me write on, like directly on. So, uh... Yeah, will it, will it, will it? Yes. Here's the stat button. Okay. So I hit the stat button. Um, I hit edit. And you'll kind of see my, you won't see my cursor per se, but you'll see me highlighting things. Um, so I hit edit and hit enter. Okay. Now what you'll see is that I put all the data. So this data right here. Again, let me highlight. Um, this data right here, I have put in L1, so I put in list 1, I just typed it in. Once you get your data in list 1, you want to see the um, box plot. So what I'm going to hit here is second stat plot, okay, and that's what's going to, um, and again, if you're using a different kind of calculator, you'll have to decide what's best for you, but it, the keys are, the prompts are similar. So second stat plot, let's see what happens. Okay, so second stat plot. And for starters, I'd like to take a look at the box plot. So I'm going to hit enter there. Let's see if it'll hit enter. Okay. Um, I highlight the word on, and then I move over to the one that looked this one right here. And you'll see it flashing on top of that. That's the modified box plot. Okay. Then I have my data in list 1, so I make sure that it says list 1 here for X list. Frequency, just keep that at 1. All the rest is fine. And again, to view everything in stats, like 
all the graphs we're, we ever make in this course, it's zoom stat to get your window. So you see I highlighted zoom stat, hit enter. There's my box plot. Now the nice part is if I hit trace, see that middle thing, and I'll see if I can zoom in for you a bit there. See that's the median. Go there, that's Q3. So now I know Q3 is 138. I know Q1 is 84, so that's your 5 num sum. So let's just say that again. You get your Q1, Q2, which is your median, 106, Q3, which is 138. You've got your max, which is 212. So now see, 212 was not an outlier because the box plot is telling us it wasn't. But we're going to figure that out mathematically. So if 212 wasn't an outlier or deemed unusual, then what would be deemed unusual for that upper bound? That's the question. So let's go ahead and grab our formula now. We know that Q3 plus 1.5 times the IQR will give us that upper fence bound for determining outliers. Now we know Q3 is 138. I wanted to show you another little trick before I do anything by hand. If you go to stat, slide over to calculate, you know how it says one variable stats there? Just hit enter. And just hit enter again. If you have your information in L1, it's by default, it knows that. So it's saying that the mean, see, this is good practice. Let me grab my pen to highlight. Um, X bar, just reminding you, X bar is your sample mean, note to self. So that's like the sample mean amount spent, charged on this credit card, right? 111. You know, 47S is your sample standard div. So here we're dealing with a sample. Um, sigma it would be your population standard div, 46, if you were dealing with a population. Okay, now... I'm going to page down. Notice it gives you the five num sum in here as well. Okay? So it gives you the five number summary. Um, so I have my computer's acting fussy, excuse me there. So it gives me the uh, Q1 is 84, the median is 106, the Q3 is 138, and the max is 212. All I wanted to do really is remind you that you can retrieve your 5-num summary directly from the box plot or from this one variable stats function, okay? But now, let's go for the big one, which is determining um, that upper fence bound. So again, I'm going to steal, I'm going to steal Q3. There it is. I'm going to steal Q3 from the computer to do this, okay? Okay, so now I know, grab a different pen here. Now I know that Q3 plus 1.5 times the IQR will give me that upper fence bound. All right, so then 138 plus 1.5 times the IQR, but what in the world is the IQR? Well, that's Q3 minus Q1, okay? So that's 138 minus, and I forget offhand what uh, Q1 was. Let me hit pause and find it. Okay, so I had to look that back up as I hit pause, but Q1 was 84. Uh, I didn't want to move off of this page, so... Okay, now what I would do is I'll just grab my calculator, and, I'll, and you can do this with me. Just keep crunching, so I'll, I'll crunch along with you. So 138 minus 84, make sure you're doing order of ops, is 54, okay? But 1.5 times 54, and then eventually plus 138, make sure you do order of ops, so basically multiply these two first. So 1.5 times 54 is something, 81 and then add that to 138 and you'll get that fence bound. There you go, 219. So when the author says determine the amount of daily charges, the amount that the daily charges must exceed before the customer is contacted, the answer is 219. So long story short, 219, $219 is the upper fence bound. That means anything beyond that, you know, would be deemed an outlier, be deemed unusual in the positive direction. So I hope that helps. And now you know, just to sort of reaffirm, that your box plot is a visual display of your five num sum. If you choose that modified box plot option, it will show you whether there's outliers or not. So, you know, it knew that there were no observations above 219. Um, we didn't get the lower fence bound, but, you know, I'll just make a little reminder here. 
note to self. We didn't do it, but if we wanted to, big note to self. If you wanted that lower fence bound, you know, that would be Q1 minus 1.5 times the IQR. And again, that's just a reminder. Reminder. Okay? So, uh, good luck with your box plots, and uh, hopefully the next podcast will be just as informative.